All right, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bucket plugin. Um, for this you'll need a few things. The, the first is the Java development kit, so uh, I'll show you where to get that now and I'll probably stick a link in as well. Um, we use Java development kit 6 for uh, bucket plugins because the uh, things compiled under 7 will not be backwards compatible with 6, while things compiled under 6 will be forwards compatible with um, Java 7. Uh, so the uh, you're looking for the Oracle website for this. Um, so if we search for that here. Uh, if you scroll down a bit, this is uh, 7, if we go down a bit, we see 6 update 38. We want the JDK for this, um, so if you click on download there, um, then you need to accept the license agreement and click on the one for your platform. Um, right then, the next thing you need is Eclipse. Uh, I'm going to be using Eclipse Indigo just because I'm used to it. Um, you can use Juno or even NetBeans, but I'd recommend um, following with Indigo because uh, everything will be the same as how it's set out on my screen. Uh, right then, so if we go to this one. Downloads. And then we have to choose Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Um, you can change this to your platform, but it should automatically detect it. Uh, so the top one, and then it will have links for it uh, inside here. Alright then, the, the final thing you'll need is um, the bucket API. Um, and for this we have to go to dl.bucket.org. Um, and then we have to click on alternate versions. And finally bucket. Uh, in case you don't know, Bucket is the API that we use for developing, and Craft Bucket is the server software for running your own server. Uh, Chat Bucket, Scrap Bucket, and Home Bucket are just default plugins that uh, are barely ever developed. Um, I'd recommend using the recommended build because it's the most stable out of the three. Uh, although you you can use the beta build uh, if there's like a particular change you want to use, or the development build as well. Um, it, the beta and development builds are updated faster, but they're less stable than the recommended build. So I'd recommend using the recommended build. Alright, uh, once all that's downloaded and installed, um, I've got it already so I won't get it. Um, run, uh, well, first extract Eclipse, because it needs to find the uh, folders that are included in the, um, the RAR with it. Um, then run it and uh, you should get a, like a welcome screen the first time you run it. Uh, just close the welcome screen on the tab at the top uh, somewhere up here um, and you should get a similar screen to this but without all these obviously. Um, right then so uh, to start off uh, we need to go through file, new, java project um, and the project name depends on what you want to do with the plugin. Uh, the first plugin we're going to do, um, we're we're just going to do uh, a basic use of listeners to see how uh, show you how the the system in Bucket works with events and uh, how to handle them, how to do things. Um, so we'll take the um, the enchanting event as an example and when somebody enchants an item um, we are going to uh, just send them a message saying what uh, enchantments they've added to their item. Alright, so um, I'm going to call this enchantment info. Uh, then after that, uh, if this is on 1.7 just switch back to 1.6 just so that you're compiling into the right execution environment then go to next. Um, the next thing we do is we click on libraries. This is where we link bucket. So we click on add external jars 
and we find our bucket API that we downloaded earlier and we open it and it will put this into the list of jars that we've got hooked. Uh, if you wanted for example to hook something like heroes or vault or something you do the same thing with that um, just for later right then so after you've done that you click finish and it will set up your um, your first uh, class for you no no it won't it will set set up the java project um, then we have um, if you click on the arrow next to it it uh, gives you these things underneath we want to right click the src folder go through new package um, and then we want to call it me dot and then your most commonly used username um, this is all smalls by the way uh, for me is Lucariatius, uh, followed by dot and then plugins and then dot and then the name of the plugin so in this case enchantment info like so uh, there are various ways of doing this this is the way that I most commonly use uh, you can use ways like your email backwards your domain backwards and things like that but this is the easiest to remember for me uh, so after that we click on finish um, and then we've got the package here. Uh, we go to new again by right clicking on the package and then class to create our first class. The first class is the basically the same name as the Java project, no spaces, capitals on each new word. So enchantment info, like so. Um, and then we can basically leave the rest. Um, then we click on finish. So we'll create our first class now. Um, so we've got uh, the package definition. This uh, shows us that the it's in this package here, and then the class definition: public class enchantment info. Uh, public modifier just uh, is basically so it can be accessed by any program um, in any class. Uh, class just means it's a class rather than an enum or something. Um, and then this is just the name of the class. Uh, the squiggly brackets contain anything that's inside the class. So uh, we, we need to make this a subclass of Java plugin, which is a bucket class. Um, to do that, we have to type in extends Java plugin. It's all case sensitive, so make sure you get the case uh, exactly the same as I've written here. Um, so once we've extended Java plugin, you'll notice that there, it comes up with a red line under Java plugin. This is because we haven't imported it from bucket yet. Uh, so if we move the mouse over the red line, uh, it should come up with this yellow box. Um, move your mouse down over onto import pl Java plugin and click, and it should put it into the import section up here. So if you add a couple of new lines inside your class now, uh, we need to make the onEnable method. Uh, this is a method in uh, Java plugin that we need to override, and it's called by bucket uh, every time a plugin loads. So either after a reload command, or um, or when the server is shut down and restarted. Uh, so this is another. Um, this is also public because it can be accessed by any class as an, any program because um, we want it to be able to be accessed by bucket. The next thing is the return type. So in this case void because it's not going to return anything. The next thing is um, the method name. So uh, in this case it's on enable small o capital E and then we want to do open like normal bracket um, and close normal bracket. And we want to do space and then open a squiggly bracket for the method body. Uh, these brackets are where you put any parameters, by the way. Uh, in this case, we don't have any because unenable doesn't need to take any. So if we press enter here, it'll automatically create the method body for us. All right. Um, now we need to make, uh, we need to load the listener class. So uh, we use this to reference the instance of this class that we have here. Um, an instance is created by bucket uh, based on the main class that you've put in your um, your plugin.yml. Uh, then we need a dot, and then get server gets the instance of the server class associated with our plugin. 
Uh, it's an inherited method from Java plugin. So any anything that extends Java plugin gets the get server method. Next, we want to do de dot get plugin manager, which gets an instance of the plugin manager class that's associated with the server class. Uh, so, the, um, so once it's returned the plugin manager, we need to register events of our listener um, using the plugin manager. Uh, so the listener, we need to create a new class, new instance of the class uh, for our listener. So for this, we type in new space, and then the class name, which is enchantment. Um, no, enchant item listener. Uh, in fact, no, it'll be player enchant item listener. Uh, and then we need two brackets here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you call the class, but uh, it's tidy to keep it the same as the event, but with the listener. So that's um, the standard I go by. Uh, the next thing is the plugin. Um, since this is the main class of the plugin, we can just pass it the argument of this, because this is an instance of Java plugin and an instance of enchantment info. Um, Right then, uh, so that's going to create the, a new instance of player enchant item listener and associate it with this plugin. Uh, so at the end of the line, you just need a semicolon because uh, you need to do that on any line that isn't starting a method class or similar. Um, so we've got a red line here, so if you move your mouse over, as last time, uh, there are three solutions for this. Um, we need to click on the one that says create class player enchant item listener. And that will create our class for us and automatically implement listener into the class. So if we finish that, um, that automatically imports listener for us and implements listener on the class definition. So we don't have to do that. Uh, add a couple of new lines in here. Um, and for event handlers, we need to use the at event handler annotation. Uh, this basically tells Bucket that the next method you write is going to handle events. So if you press enter underneath there, we want to type public space void space on player enchant item. Again, the method name doesn't really matter, but it's just tidy to do it the same as the event. Uh, and then we do open bracket player enchant item event and then event. Um, what that basically means... Oh, bother, I've got it wrong. Um, okay, something... Yeah, okay, enchant item event, not player enchant item event. Uh, sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, so yeah, just change all these to match enchant item instead of player enchant item uh, here as well. Okay, um, right then, what this basically means is the, the event handler takes a parameter of a enchant, an enchant item event and calls it event within the method. Um, uh, it needs to be accessed by bucket, so we use public. Um, void is the return type again, it's not going to return anything. And then on player enchant item is the method name, and parameters are here. Uh, so if we move our mouse over invent handler now, we need to have written the method for this to appear. Uh, so you can't do this before, because uh, it didn't really understand the annotation without a method. So we click on import event handler org.bucket.event, and the red line will go away for us. Okay, so in here um, we uh, we do any um, anything that we want to do when someone enchants an item. So um, for this, we're going to be sending a message to the player for each uh, each enchantment they've added to an item. So uh, we're going to need to iterate through the enchantments. Uh, this is like a way of looping for each uh, each enchantment that's been added. Uh, so firstly, we're going to create um, 
a variable called iterator of type iterator um, and we're going to set that to uh, event dot get in chance to add um, dot uh, key set dot iterator the last method iterator returns an iterator which we're going to store in the iterator variable semicolon on the end here move mouse over here java.util.iterator make sure you don't use the javax.swing.text.html.html document iterator we want the java.util one okay now um, oh one more thing uh, it's an iterator of enchantments so uh, we just stick this here um, and import enchantment from bucket. Okay, now we're going to use a while loop and loop through the enchantments uh, that are being added in the event. So we do while iterator dot has next. Uh, this basically will continue until the iterator doesn't have a next value. Uh, while loops uh, continue while what is in the brackets here uh, returns true. Uh, so in this case if the iterator has a next value. Uh, so we do space and then open the squiggly bracket here and then press enter and it will create the while loop for us. Inside here uh, we're going to do um, we're going to do enchantment enchantment equals iterator dot next so this basically creates a variable enchantment and sets it to the next value in the iterator. Uh, in this case, we're iterating through the key set of the enchants to add. Enchants to add returns a hash map of enchantments to integers, which is like enchantments to their level. Um, so we want to uh, we we want to send a message to the player for each one of these. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, this information here uh, is part of the Java docs of Bucket, so if, if you want them to appear, you can go through Properties on here, Java Build Path, click on the down arrow next to the Bucket Library, click on the Java doc location, edit it, and type in http colon slash slash jd.bucket.org forward slash appy docs forward slash. Um, and it should find the Java Docs of Bucket and allow you to see any information on methods, classes, etc., which is really useful. Right then, um, so now we're going to send the message a player for each enchantment they added. Um, so we want to get the player. Um, so we do player, player equals event dot get player. So we're creating, oh, we're creating a variable player of type player and setting it to the player that enchanted the item. Um, oh, this is wrong. Uh, it will be enchanter rather than player, sorry. Um, there we go. Uh, a lot of other events use get player, but this uses get enchanter, uh, sorry. Right then, uh, the next thing we need to do is send them the message. So here we do player.send message um, and then we want to do, um, we're going to use a color here, chat color. This is an enum of chat colors. And then dot, and then you can see all the colors that you can send them a message in. Uh, I'm going to use dark purple because uh, it's a nice magical wizardy color. <laughs> right then, so, and then we append another string to this. Uh, so in this case, we're going to do enchantment dot and then we're going to get the name of the enchantment, which is a string. Uh, so we append that to the chat color. Um, and then we add another string. Um, in fact, no, we'll do... We'll add a bit more information to make it a bit more user-friendly. Uh, the enchantment plus this. Uh, and then we're going to do... Um, we're going to do the level of the enchantment. So uh, we'll do a space first. Uh, so we have to surround that in quotes because it's a string again. And then plus uh, event.get enchants 
to add dot get enchantment. So it's going to get the level of the enchantment. And then plus uh, was added to uh, your and then we're going to do plus event dot get our item I believe it is yeah and then dot get name no in fact no uh, get item dot get type sorry we need to get the type of the item to get its name Uh, okay, uh, two string, we'll use two string, so that'll convert it to a string. Uh, right then, uh, that is it for sending each message, I believe. Um, uh, just to make it look a bit prettier, um, we'll add another chat color in here, so we'll do chat color dot light purple in there and then chat color dark purple in there and probably another chat color dark light purple in here okay so for each enchantment added, it's going to send them a message uh, telling them that the enchantment was added. Okay, um, uh, I think we'll, um, we'll keep it there for the first plugin. Uh, the final thing we need to do is to create a, a plugin.yml. This basically tells Bucket what it's loading uh, and what it can do. Um, the uh, it's it's a sort of configuration file I guess. There are a few fields that are required. These include name, uh, so enchantment info, version. Uh, so this will follow any versioning system you want. Uh, it could be 0.0.1 or 1.0.0 or even 1.0 or 9000. Um, I'm going to stick with 1.0.0 for now. Um, Right then, uh, and then the final thing is the main class, which is called this main, uh, and then we do me dot yes. This is the package name uh, dot plugins dot enchantment info, and then followed by another dot, and then the uh, the name of the main class. So this, in this case, uh, our main class that extended Java plugin uh, is called enchantment info here. Um, we can also add another field that I like to add uh, called author and put in your user in there. So if we save all there. And then um, finally we have to go down to export to make the final plugin. So we click on jar file, next. And then we find the, the plugin in this list. Uh, Enchantment Info, it'll be easier for you because you've got a lot less. Tick Source, click on Enchantment Info here, and tick Plugin. Uh, I'm going to export it straight to my plugin testing server. Uh, if you don't know how to set up a server, then uh, consult another tutorial because I'm not going to go over that here. It's, uh, it's another thing. Um, right then, so uh, in this case, we're going to call it Enchantment Info .jar. Uh, you can probably also browse if you want to, might make it a bit easier, but I've got the path typed out already, so I can do that. Uh, right then, so if we go to next here, next again, and then finish, it'll create the jar for us. Um, so if I go to my plugin testing server now, um, here, get rid of any others that I was testing so that we get a clean install for it. 
uh, run uh, start.sh or start.bat, depending on which platform you're on. Uh, and then run, run Minecraft to test it. Uh, as we can see in the log here, it's enabled our plugin successfully and it hasn't thrown any errors, which is good. Um, right then. So if we go on multiplayer here, uh, and then mine's on localhost, you might have an external testing server if you like that, but I don't. Um, and then the next thing we do is to uh, create an enchantment table and to test whether it sends us the messages. So uh, switch some of these. Enchantment table here. Place this down. Um, and then if I place my um, one of my iron swords in here and enchant it. It'll tell us that um, the enchantment damage all one was added to my iron sword. Uh, and we can see on here that it's got sharpness one, which Bucket refers to as damage all one. Alright then, um, that's basically it for the first tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye!